I'm Risa, I'm here with my husband Kevin. We're from Hudson Valley Vintage. We're here for our barn quilt workshop tonight. We're gonna be doing two different designs. The crystal design, as well as the Ohio design. These are both star barn quilts. So I'm gonna show you before we get actually started with the paint, the guide that I use. So you could go online and you can look for um, barn quilt patterns. Some of them I'm guessing you can even print out, but I found this amazing um, company called Baker Nest and she does these really great barn quilt guides. So I've bought several of them. I've used this one um, in the fall. We use this one in the fall. This one is called the Muted Mosaic Star. And um, let me show you what that one looks like. I did a little one first as a practice, kind of to see if I liked it. And once I did it, I knew that our customers were just gonna be crazy for it. So this is a 12 by 12. I did this just on a wood panel. So when we did our workshop in the store, we did it much larger and this is a larger one and again this is the muted mosaic star so we're not going to be doing this today but i wanted to show you how versatile these are you could even do them on a small piece like a six by six or basically any size but this one i think is 24 inches by 24 inches mm -hmm. square yep. I've, uh, we've done them 20 by 20, all different sizes. You need a, a ruler or if you're doing a large one, you wanna have a yardstick. So if this was really big, if this was like two feet and I only had a short ruler, it would be hard because I'd have to keep moving it. You wanna have a pencil, obviously, and an eraser because you're gonna make mistakes. Really important is your painter's tape. So. Most people think of painter's tape as blue, and blue painter's tape is fine. This is from 3M, it's fine. Not for this, guys. For this, you wanna have frog tape. Frog tape is really, I don't know what they, they call it paint block technology. Yeah, it's coated, it's coated with a, a polymer. Okay. That it's supposedly activated by latex paint, but it's actually late activated by by any moisture. Yeah, we're not and, using latex yep. paint. And so when moisture hits that tape, the polymer expands and, right. and plugs up all the gap or any of the seam or the gap underneath the tape and the uneven surface of the wood and it prevents the paint from seeping in. Really so um, the frog tape comes in this kind of a package and you know, obviously I don't have much left on this, but that's what you want to get. It's a little bit more expensive, but you're going to save yourself a lot of we aggravation. We put it in the kits. Yeah. Thank you, honey. So we do sell kits. So the paint kit, um, let me show you what it comes with. So our paint kits come with, we actually have the design pre-drawn out for you on the, um, the wood. We're using, uh, it's grooved. Yeah. Similar Much to, like shiplap. Like, yeah, it's almost like shiplap, like planking. It yeah. Looks like, it looks like so it look, planking. It, exactly. So it resembles shiplap. Um, and we do the design for you. If you buy the kit, you just tell us if you want the Ohio style or the crystal. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, just send me an email or a text and I will send you all the Both information. Pictures, so you can see which one you like. It comes with two colors of paint just like this, but you can you have a whole bunch of colors to choose from. It comes with the painter's tape. We give you a, um, a dowel with the paint on, with the tape on it. Um, it comes with instructions. Okay, so um, what you need to know, it's important to know that don't just assume that the piece of wood you get is the size that you think it is. So this, this a piece- A two by four is not two inches by four inches. What is it? It's always less. Okay. Yep. So always, is this. It's always shorter. So this is supposed to be 12 inches and it is 11 and just under three quarters inches. It's the same on both ways. Oh, so anyway, um, you just need to know that. So as you're doing your um, 
measurements, since it's not exactly 12, if you were gonna measure half, you're not gonna measure six inches. I'm just giving you guys an example. I don't wanna confuse you. You're gonna measure it based on what this actually is, not based on the 12 inches, okay? So what I do after I map this out is I take my ruler and I just look at the different squares to see if they're exact. You know what, they're not exact, but they're close enough mm. that mm. it doesn't matter. Okay, so um, I'm using just um, sponge brushes. Those are fine. Really any kind of paintbrush is fine. The only kind of paintbrush I would steer away from is a natural bristle brush. And that's true with furniture painting um, because what happens with natural bristles is they tend to break off and you'll end up with a beautiful piece all dry and you'll look at it and you'll notice that there's a so, so dry John, hair. What? I just paint, I just put a light coat of paint before I started. So this is what it looked like before. And then I just put a light coat of paint. Once it dried, I did my design. Okay, so um, I'm gonna get started. I'm using Fusion Mineral Paint today. We actually sell in our shop and online Fusion Mineral Paint, general finishes, as well as real milk paint. We still also have some Miss Mustard Seed Smoke Paint. Um, I'm using Fusion Mineral Paint. It's got a built-in top coat, so if you wanted to put this outside, you actually could. You could hang it outside. So if you're painting with a milk-based or a chalk-based paint, and most furniture paints do not have a built-in top coat, so that means you need to seal it with something. So Fusion has that built-in top coat, which may, means you don't have to take that extra step of waxing or whatever you're gonna do. You're now, gonna I'll also give you a great tip. When you do your first, when you do that first coat on here, prior to doing your design, use one of the colors that you're gonna use in your barn quilt. That way, you may not even have to paint those areas. You might wanna do one light coat, but it saves you a little bit of time. These, obviously, I did not knowing what colors I was gonna use. So, so I'm gonna do a blue, I, I love blue. Right, honey? Mm -hmm. We love blue. So I'm using two colors. Um, this is Midnight Blue, and this is um, French Eggshell. So those are the two colors I'm gonna use. You're probably thinking I have such a small amount of paint. We're not gonna use a lot of paint. If you've ever stenciled, it's not quite as little paint as you use stenciling, but it's close. So I'm gonna start in the middle here on this one and um, I'm gonna first do my center and I'm gonna go as close to the line as I can. And what I really wanna focus on is making sure that the side of my tape that's going on the board is completely flat and flush and there's no bubbles. Can you see how yep. can you see how where that groove those grooves are how I pushed it into mm -hmm. the into the groove? Yep. Okay. And so you'll you're basically going to tape off a section at a time, paint it, peel that off, mm -hmm. and then dry it and then paint exactly tape, tape the next section. You want to make sure the tape the paint is dry before you're putting tape over it. It's one of the other great reasons we use frog tape because it doesn't pull tape off or pull paint off. But once this paint is dry, once fusion is dry, it, it doesn't it doesn't come off. So I'm also, um, so I'm trying to think about how I'm gonna do this. Like at this point, you wanna know what your colors are gonna be. Like where are you gonna put, where are you gonna put the dark color? Where are you gonna put the light colors? That sort of thing. So you do wanna think about that. Um, I think I'm going to follow this and do the light color in the middle and the dark color in the other areas. And by the way, if it doesn't confuse you too much, you can, you can use four different colors for this. You just want them to be symmetrical. One thing you could do, 
um, as you decide. So you've got your colors on the on the dish. So uh, you, so you can you've got your colors in the in the on the plate. Um, you could, when you identify which spaces you want, you can put a dab of the dark color in the triangles that you want to paint, which could then you have give such, you, honey, you kind of like a pattern have later on. Such just a dab, ideas. just a little time. Don't a little dab, dab will do don't, you. Don't dab the a light colors. A little dab will do you. Light. So I'm going to start painting, and um, I'm not using now. I'm getting. I want to get the paint in those grooves there. So I'm kind of pushing them in. I'm not using a huge amount of paint because now I don't want to get it in perfectly in the grooves because I want to still see them. But um, I don't want to use too much paint. Even though this is a really great painter's tape, if you're using a crazy amount of paint. Yeah, nothing will protect it. Yeah. So now I'm going to go um, and tape off over here. You want to give me that one? No, not yet. I need another coat. Oh, you dry that one now. I need another coat. Just, just, it's okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you, though. Okay. So again, I'm, I'm going to make sure that I get my tape in the grooves. So now this is almost dry, believe it or not. I can see it's a little wet still, but it's dry enough for me to do another light coat. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So I'm actually going to take this tape off. Look at that line. Can you see how perfect that is? Isn't that amazing? And I'm actually going to take this because I'm stingy and I'm going to I'm going to put this on my um, I'm going to put this on my piece right here so I can reuse the other half. Okay, so I'm going to take this off, and you know what? This needs another. This needs another very quick coat. Okay, look how perfect that is! Isn't that amazing? So now I'm going to I'm going to go back to this one and I'm going to take some more tape and it's always good if you now I have these as my guide because I did these before it's always really good if you have your guide your printed out guide in front of you so you know where you're supposed to be taping and painting so um, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tape out a couple of these um, right here and notice I'm not worried about getting the tape on this um, where I painted already because it's dry and I know that it's not going to come up.
All right, so now I'm gonna get started on this and I'm gonna use the opposite of what I did here. I'm going to um, use the, um, the lighter color. So I need a different brush. Do you think that's more enough? Enough? Um... Let me dry and see what it looks like. Okay. So now I'm back to my crystal design, and um, I'm going to start taping off the outside corners on this. Okay, so for this one, um, I'm going to use the light color again for my um, for my outside. And you know, when you're thinking about the colors that you're using, I would try to um, use colors that are going to cover well, because this color is covering so good that. I think I'm only going to do one coat, right? Now, if you had it, if you used a, a board and you wanted it, there's the one picture on the cover um, that shows it's almost a natural. Yeah, you could use the stain. Yeah, actually. So Okay, so now I'm going back to my um, Ohio star and I'm going to take this tape off and again look how great that's holding up. Okay, so so here here I am, and you can see I'm doing something. I'm doing this design, but I'm doing it a little bit differently. So now what I'm going to do is start working on what I have left are these four triangles on each end. So I'm going to start working on um, the outside ones, and I'm going to reuse this tape. I'm going to reuse the other side and, and so I can actually use it twice.
All right, so now I'm gonna use the same blue here that I used here. And again, this is the Ohio, this is this, this is this one right here. Okay, let's trade. We got a good groove going here, honey. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm gonna. We're back to this one. This is the crystal one, and I'm gonna pull off the tape. So now this one, I'm gonna go, um, the next part I'm gonna do are these triangles here. And I am gonna be using um, this color. Cause you can see here, these are the same. Now if you wanna use more than the two colors that we're using, that's fine. But just, you know, like Kevin said before, you want to be careful that you... Um, You're so confused. Yeah, that you don't confuse yourself. start again with the light color so and, and by the way whatever two colors you choose they should be contrasting so you want a light color and a dark color you don't want two dark colors or two light colors um, because you're not going to see the contrasting Thank you, Mom. Okay. I never thought I'd ever be painting two horn quilts at one at one time, but it's it's kind of fun. So now that I've painted on both sides of this tape, I'm just gonna get rid of it. Now I want to show you a little mistake I made. I don't know if you can see this, but right there, I went a little too short. Can you see that? So I, I went a little too short on that pencil mark. So now I have a choice. I can either retape it and just fill in that little spot, or I can just make that a little bigger. And that's what I think I'm gonna do, only because it's easier. So that's what I'm gonna do. So we're back to our Ohio quilt. And now what I'm gonna do is paint these triangles here in the dark blue color. 
So um, I'm gonna just tape that out again. Okay, so now I'm doing um, the darker color. If you're ever like lost to, well, what color do I do? Here's a little tip. I'm next to the light color, so I'm gonna do a dark color. Okay. So Kevin is actually drying it for me in between. So now we're back to, um, which one are we back to? We're back to Crystal. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is these right here. And these I'm going to do in the dark again. So um, Alrighty, so I'm again I'm using the midnight blue.
Okay. Let's trade, honey. You know what? I missed. Can you see that there? I just missed that little end right there. So I'm just going to put a little paint right there. I have a teeny bit of bleed through which I want to show you so you see what it looks like. So I have a teeny bit of bleed through right there. And I'm actually kind of glad because I'm going to show you how to fix that. There you go, honey. Getting down to the last one. Yeah. Well, so this one, we're back to Ohio. That's the name of the design. And we are really close to being finished. Now, when we're doing new workshops, so tomorrow you actually have a live workshop going, right? Yeah, tomorrow we're, we have a private workshop. We're using Zoom, and they're going to be, we're all going to be working at the same time. So I can actually see you. So if you guys want to do that, something like that, let us know. Now, I'm going to have to go back, which I'll probably do tomorrow. And I'm going to do a second coat over here. And I have a teeny bit of bleed through like there and there. But otherwise, I'm really happy with mm -hmm. it. So um, 
This one is this one right here. Mm -hmm. I'd love to know what you guys think about, let, it, let us know what you think about the third color rather than just um, two colors. It's pretty cool. So that's done. Again, I just need to clean it up a little bit. And that's it. Okay, so let's go back to this one and let me find a spot where I have some bleed through. Um, okay, so um, actually. You want a small brush? No, no, no. So actually, right there, I have a little bit of bleed through. Um, actually, let's make a little um, more bleed through. Let's pretend that. Um, That I have a little more. Let me just dry it with um, something. Here we go. I'm just going to dry it so I can tape over it. So let's pretend that this is some bleed through right here. Okay. So we're going to pretend that, that I have some bleed through right here. So we're going to pretend that my midnight blue, my dark blue, has bled onto my French eggshell. So all I'm going to do to fix it is retape it. Oh, not big enough. So I'm just going to retape this, but I want to make sure that I have the bleed through on the other side. So there's all my bleed through. Can you see all the bleed through? That's yep, the. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now I'm just going to take my lighter blue and I'm going to repaint that. And then I'm going to take the tape off. And you can actually. If you're not going to use a blow dryer or anything, you can take the mm -hmm. tape off of wet paint. And look at that. Perfect. Can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. So that's how you fix... Perfect straight line. That's how you fix the bleed through. So let me take the tape off of the other one so you guys can see the, the finished... So I do have a couple of little spots, like I have a teeny bit of bleed through right there, mm -hmm. um, a teeny bit where the light went on the dark right there, um, but overall it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, and you could pull, you could pull the frog tape off when it's still damp. I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm drying it and it, yeah, it's dry to the touch. Mm -hmm. Um, but you can pull it off. It's not a problem. So this one again is the Ohio star and This one is The crystal star so if you decide to buy one of our barn quilts if you want to order one the kit I mean that's what you have a choice of so that's our barn quilt workshop first of all Thank you so much for joining us tonight 
we've had a blast. You, you guys have been so engaging and you've had so many great questions and made us really think. So thank you for that. Thank you for taking the time to spend with us. We appreciate you could have done anything tonight and we appreciate that you spent your time with us. So again, my name is Risa. I'm here with my husband, Kevin. We're Hudson Valley Vintage. Um, please join us anytime, usually Wednesday nights. Like I said, we're here at six o'clock and um, we had a blast. Again, if you have any questions, post them in the comments and we will get back to you. Otherwise, we hope to see you again. Take care, everybody. Have a great night.